What is up guys, it's Mateos, 2020 Politics here, and today, I'm going to be discussing the results of the New Hampshire Democratic Party presidential primary. So I'm going to pull up the results here. Uh, Wikipedia only shows the first three candidates, because they're the only three that actually won any districts. So in first place, we have Bernie Sanders um, at 25.7% of the popular vote. Uh, people are judging the second at 24.4%. Now, the interesting thing about here, about this scenario, is that the delegate count is the same between Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg. So they both have nine delegates. It's different from Iowa when Pete Buttigieg won the, de the delegate count, but Bernie Sanders won the popular vote. Here, they're tied in the delegate count, but Bernie Sanders clearly won the pop popular vote by 1.3%. And then Amy Klobuchar, a somewhat distant third place at 19.8% of the vote with six delegates. So why isn't Joe Biden in the top three? Well, that is because his momentum went all the way down. It plunged after Iowa because he got fourth place. In this day, he got fifth place. And nationally, he's also plunged. And I'm going to make a video about that soon. Um, he is polling in a narrow first for Nevada. It, and he's in the, you know... He's in a com he's uh, sitting comfortably in first place in South Carolina. So, will the results of Iowa and Hampshire affect him in Nevada and South Carolina? Possibly. It might even cost him Nevada. Um, with South Carolina, his lead there is so high to the point where it, it, even if it costs him a lot, he's still going to win. So, um, we had two candidates drop out during the New Hampshire primary. That was Andrew Yang and Michael Bennett. So... This video is going to be a bit of a combination of the new results of the New Hampshire Democratic primary of 2020 for the presidency and Andrew Yang and Michael Bennett dropping out. So I'm going to talk about Michael Bennett first because he is the one I'm less interested in. Uh, I still like him because he's one of those candidates that was a centrist, but I actually, you know, he, again, he was he's one of those candidates like, uh, you know, that reminds you of John Delaney. Why? In the sense that the case for the two of them was that when they were actually at the debate stage, when I was actually hearing stuff about them, I wanted them to go away. But when they were away, I wanted them to come back. Why? Because I despise their policies, but they're just funny almost. I wanted to, I, I enjoy them in a way. They're, they're some of my favorites and some of my least favorites at the same time. John Delaney, because he was just fear-mongering. He was Mr. Fear-monger, just saying, all the hospitals are going to close down. Uh, I, I, have to wipe my, I have to wipe my sweat off. Um, I have to look calm in this debate. We're all going to die if we implement Medicare for All. That's basically John Delaney in a nutshell. Michael Bennett is more like, Medicare for all is bad because because it's, it's going to cost us all of our money and we need to fix our corrupt and broken criminal justice system and get Trump out of office. Hooray! He's just really laid back. Um, almost boring. I remember whenever my, my mom and I would watch the first and second debate, which were the only two he was into out of the eight, which is, which is bad enough, whenever he would start speaking in them, my mom and I would just go like this, as, as a joke, <laughs> because we just he didn't he didn't say anything special, and it makes it even worse that when he actually did speak, it was in a very you know, almost mumbling, very laid back, boring way. He just wasn't interesting to watch. So he was one of those really delusional candidates who was only in the first two debates, and not in the last six. And I actually thought that John Delaney would outlast him because. John Delaney was even more delusional. He thought he could really win. So he dropped out on, on the 31st of January. Michael Bennett was still in. And when Iowa came along and he got four votes, not a joke. He actually got four. Go ahead, look, go ahead, look at their vote results. He actually got four votes. Four people showed up. I mean, imagine if four people show up and vote for you and you're running for president in Iowa. Just drop out. <laughs> I don't know why he wouldn't have dropped out already by then. So, if you didn't drop out before Iowa, you definitely should have dropped out right after Iowa because, well, you got four votes. And stay on for New Hampshire, what are you doing? So he got a few hundred votes in New Hampshire, which is a lot for him. <laughs> and he finally realized, okay, guys, I'm going to drop out. Because I remember that the general belief was that he was going to actually stay until New Hampshire. And if he wouldn't do well in Iowa or New Hampshire, he would just call it quits. And that's exactly what he did. But even then, he stayed around for way too long. Uh, he was a centrist against things like Medicare for All. Um, overall, I liked him because of how boring he was. 
and how delusional he was. He was like, you know, um, a smaller version of Wayne Messam, because Wayne Messam had a bunch of children. He had John Delaney, he had Deval Patrick, he had Joe Sestak, and he had Michael Bennett. Now we're going to talk about the obviously more well-known and more important and more unique candidate as dropped out, which sounds me, Andrew Yang. So I'm going to miss him because I didn't support him myself. Um, and I think part of the reason that I really let, that I decided about him dropping out was that my belief of him really changed over time. Because at the beginning of the race, I just disliked him because he's one of my least favorites. Because I'm like, okay, okay, I get it. You want to give everybody $1,000 a month. He just kept saying it over and over at debates. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm just, okay, I get it. I understand what you want. You want UBI. Just stop talking about it. It, just, it got really irritating. He, became, he, was, he came off as irritating to me because it seemed like he's a robot that can only talk about UBI and nothing else. He also was somewhat right-wing on the issue of gun control, which at the time was the most important issue to me now. At the time was one of the most important issues to me. And still is, but just not, not as much as back then. But then I started seeing with the debates, and I started seeing that he couldn't just, he didn't only talk about UBI, he was talking about other things. And this guy's intelligent. He has that. He has his intelligence. Because if you bring up all these statistics and facts, I'm like, whoa, you're, you're actually a genius. You're a pretty smart guy. He also seemed like he was a generally cool guy, like a bit charming, like you want to hang out with him someday in, in a restaurant, eat dinner. Um, so yeah, I kind of grew to love him as his campaign went on. I went from just disliking him even though he was a progressive, to actually almost loving him, but not enough to support him. And I wouldn't have supported him if he stayed longer, either. So he was definitely one of my favorites. It, it probably goes like Bernie Sanders. I think Andrew Yang would be second. Because even though I disagree with UBI, which is the whole reason why he was running, I liked him overall because he knew what he was saying, um, he was energized, he was a populist, and he had progressive policies. So, he has dropped out. I'm going to miss him. I grew to love him, of course. Because, look, man, his supporters are progressive. Some of them are even conservative. So he could have... A, a kid at my school is actually mentioning to me that because of how many conservative he, supporters he has, come, you know, when a general election comes by, he could actually get some Trump voters uh, to go on his side because of the whole 1000 freedom dividend a month deal. So... Rest in peace, Andrew Yang. I will miss you. Uh, Michael Bennett, not so much. And one reason, of course, with Michael Bennett is that he, for the last few months, he wasn't appearing at all. I, I, I don't think I heard him speak for the last, like, half year or something like that. So he was just, he was dragging. Um, he just didn't need to stay in the race anymore. He's kind of delusional. With Andrew Yang, you know, he got 1% in Iowa, uh, 3% in New Hampshire. So it's much better than Michael Bennett. But still kind of bad. And honestly, to be, and to be honest, I think that even Andrew Yang was being a bit delusional. Because he stuck around for Iowa. And he got 1%. But then I probably would have dropped out. But he decided to just stretch it a bit. Just be a bit delusional and stay around for New Hampshire. We got 3%. But to be fair um, to you, Andrew Yang, you probably knew you'd do well in New Hampshire. Better, much better than in Iowa, anyway. So that's probably why you stayed in. And... So 1% Iowa, 3% New Hampshire. It was about time for him to drop out. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I'm sad to say it, but his time was coming. He, he um, didn't qualify for the 7th. He did qualify for the 8th debate, though. But I don't think he was going to qualify for the 9th. So his campaign was definitely coming to an end. To an end. Um, with Michael Bennett, his campaign has been coming to an end since July. Because that's the last debate he was in. So, um... Back to... So, um... Summary of the video. Michael Bennett drops out. Um, I do care for him because of how boring he was and how delusional he was. I kind of loved him for that. Uh, Andrew Yang dropped out, but I love him for real. Not because he was my favorite candidate, but he was one of my favorites. Maybe even number two. So I'm sad to see him go. Um, and Bernie Sanders has won the New Hampshire Democratic Party presidential primary. Uh, second place is Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar. And I think it was Elizabeth Warren in fourth place and Joe Biden in fifth place. And everybody else is just a bit irrelevant in New Hampshire. So, um, see you guys later, and bye.